Hello, everyone. Welcome to Microsoft Community Insight Podcast, where we share insights and stories from community experts to stay up to date with Azure. I'm Nicholas, and I will be your host today. In this podcast, we will dive into Azure migration, but to, before we get started, I want to remind you to subscribe to our podcast and social media so you never miss an episode. It helps us to reach more amazing people like yourself. So today we have a special, a special guest on this podcast called Kevin Evans. Can you start by introducing yourself, please? Hey, Nick. I love the intro, by the way. It sounded like a, an Avicii or a Swedish house mafia track, right? I thought I was back in the clubs, man. It was a, <laughs> it was a really good intro, yeah, right? I it was really a brilliant. That. Yeah, it was good, man. It was good. But uh, yeah, just to give myself a quick introduction. Uh, my name is Kevin Evans. I'm a cloud solution architect. I work at Microsoft as well. Um, I don't consider myself an expert, Nick. I feel like I'm always learning everything every day, but I'm happy to be yeah, on the show. Man. No one is. The cloud is evolving, so no one's in, but <laughs> no one's an expert. So before we get started, can you explain what is the cloud solution architect at Microsoft? What is what the role involved? So cloud solution architects are, are, uh, have a different meaning for different companies, right? So I see the cloud solution architect role as something a bit more traditional. You know, we, we have platform engineers now, right? And platform engineering, yeah. all that good stuff. But what I do is I help customers um, implement technical solutions, right? So I validate architecture. We, we do like uh, big sky thinking, that kind of thing. Um, you know, I specialize in a, in a couple of domains. I do infra infrastructure, right? That's where I started. I also do cybersecurity as well. And I do cloud native as well, right? So nice mix there, right? And they all bleed into each other. But um, on a day-to-day -day basis, I help customers, you know, uh, accelerate their journey into Azure or get the best out of Azure. Okay, so you can say cloud solution after is similar to uh, cloud innovate advocate sorry cloud what say that again cloud advocate or yeah advocate yes, yeah apologies. um yeah i advocate cloud technologies right but i also help design the architecture around that as well okay brilliant so has today theme is as your migration we're gonna just quickly yeah. touch on that so can you explain what Azure Migration is and why it's important for the viewers? So Azure Migrate is a, a tool and an appliance, right? It's also a process. So if you're coming from a on-premises background and typically you would virtualize um, infrastructure as a service on-premise, right? So virtual machines, you'll be either using ESXi by VMware, right? It's very popular. Hyper-V, or you'll have what we call bare metal, right? Um, typically database servers, that kind of thing, right? Stuff that needs raw horsepower, right? Or is it requires that dedicated uh, access to the hardware. Um, and you need a process of typically getting those services, those workloads into Azure, right? Um, but you also need to know how much it's going to cost as well right and what the translation is from on-premise hardware and architecture to what it looks like in the cloud right because it's completely they're, they're completely two yeah. different things so a lot of people trip up on i'll just migrate what i've got put it in azure and it'll work <laughs> right <laughs> which is not the case right which is not the yep. case you you've got to do a lot of discovery You've got to do a lot of prep work. You need to do a lot of dependency analysis, right? You know, we talk about software bill of materials, right? Um, that includes operating systems and architecture, right? So thinking about that. And you need to know how much it's going to cost. And, and, and quite frankly, if it's going to work, right? So I, I've come across some niche cases over my time. Um, but like the, the major hurdles are we're going to manage it in Azure, the way we managed it on premise. One, that's inefficient, and two, it might not work, 
right? So having a yeah. Azure Migrate appliance is going to help you, right? Make the get get you the data and the information. So one, you can make technical decisions, and two, you can feed that back to your leadership, right, and the stakeholders in your organization. And basically, how much is this going to cost? And it's very crucial to have the discovery phrase in the Azure Migration. For sure. I think a lot of people skip over it, right? Um, I always ask customers to take their time with it. Um, there's always a rush, right, to get that stage. Um, but the longer you leave it, the better the data you're going to get. Um, the way you deploy it on premise as well. You know, I've, I've done multiple scenarios over the years, agentless and agent with agents, right? So basically, you, you can download an uh, OVA image, I think it is from our website and get it deployed as an appliance, right? Virtually inside your environment. And as long as it's connects to the V center, right? Or the hyper V I'm trying to remember what the hyper V version is called, right? I really should know this, but the virtual machine manager that you get for hyper V, um, yeah, yeah. as long as you can sort of integrate with the WMI queries, you'll be able to pull that data back centrally. And then what you do is you log ship those results back up to Azure, right? And then there's a nice tool built into the Azure portal. The great thing is you can break it up into projects, into sections. So a lot of customers like to start small, but when we think about it, you know, crawl, walk and run with any piece of technology, especially if it's new. So I always say we have like this canary phase, right? Well, what servers should we look at to understand how the tool works. Let's set up discovery on that. And what the appliance actually does is one, it checks the hardware that that virtual machine's running on, right? How many CPUs, V cores, how much memory it's got, storage. What we tend to find is um, a lot of on premise servers are over spec'd, right? So you buy your piece of tin, HP, Dell, right? And normally it's over egged, right? There's more memory in there than that's required. There's more CPU than that's required. There's more storage than what's required because you've purchased it, right? So you use it. Whereas with the cloud, you can really right size it. And traditionally, you know, hardware isn't like for like. Hardware in the cloud is more modern and more efficient. And, you know, we have more different. Um, hardware types, right? If we look at Azure, right? From a virtual machine point of view. Yeah. So what you'll find is you actually need less cores, less CPUs, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's right? right? Because it's newer hardware, right? We swap that out constantly, right? Yeah. And that reduces your cost, makes it more efficient. Um, the way it does that is it queries the WMI queries on the server, right? And it also speaks to the vCenter, right? If you're using ESXi. And it finds out where your peaks and troughs are. So you may have batch processes running a couple of times a month, right? But normally the CPU is idling around 30 to 40%. Well, you can, you can do things around that, right? And that's going to make it cheaper for you in Azure. But the one thing I really you, see... Go on, sorry, Nick, go on. Would you say that were one of the challenges that business face when migrating to Azure? There's that, right? And then there's, they don't have the foundations in place in Azure ready to take these workloads on. Okay. So you've really got to educate them, right? Because it's, it's new and it's different. You know, we think about how we used to build data centers on premise. We'd have networking, right? Connectivity. We'd have, um, yeah. We'd have uh, external ISPs helping us. We'd have traditional firewalls deployed. We would manage those virtual machines with different sets of tools. And then it always comes back to landing zones, Nick. I know we were trying to dodge the question, but it always comes back to landing zones, right? Because it's really important that you get this right. Um, it's, you know, the way you got to look at it is if you've got the right foundations in place, then whatever workloads you put in there, it's going to help you secure them and manage them, right? I, I've seen customers that have massive system center environments on premise managing their on prem. And then I show them the automation tools that we've got in Azure or the update manager, right? And all of a sudden, this massive operational overhead starts to get reduced. 
but things like security, you know, the stuff that we can do in the cloud is is more capable than what we what we could ever have done on premise, right? So how do we protect our workloads, right? How do we enable HA for our tier one workloads, right? Our diamond apps. How do we build in reliability, right? And that's where the well-architected framework comes into place. So yeah. it's not just about migrating. It's also making sure you've got a safe place for those resources to land. Because we want this to be a success, don't we? Regardless. Yeah, right? sure. Yeah, great. Would you count that, uh, that you mentioned above, some of the best practice for successful migration for, cli for clients? Yeah, so we've got a great documentation right um it's very concise which i like um but like checking out the well architected framework understanding the process of how a migration works right getting the plumbing hooked up i think azure migrate is a very good project first project for people to spin up in azure right so once you've got your landing zone in place right you figure all that out you create an Azure Migrate project, you connect to appliance on-prem. You know, you've already created a site-to-site -site connection, right, from Azure to your on-premise environment. And you start to get some artifacts that are deployed in Azure. So it gives you a good feel of what's going on and how the, the platform works. But really understanding exactly what you need. You know, running agent deployments. I mean, I mean, there is an agentless discovery mode for Azure Migrate, but I I would say use agents. It is more work, but you get better data. And try and run, try and run the discovery for at least thirty days, right? So you get a full calendar month of the peaks and the troughs, right, of the performance requirements for for the workloads that you have on premise. Yeah, brilliant. So from your past experience, can you share some interesting or complex Azure migration that you worked on? Yeah. So back in my partner days, we had a scenario where we had, I'm going to say it was a Red Hat quorum, right? I don't know what it was running, man. It was, there was more smart people looking at this, but it was running in this custom cluster that had a IBM backend, right? Running the cluster in the core room. That had difficulty running in Azure. It was very bespoke. I'd not come across many kind of architectures like that in my lifetime, in my experience. And we had difficulties migrating that. Um, it, I believe we managed to get around it when we got some specialist um migration tools which are outside the microsoft ecosystem right to help us with that but you can't just come and bring everything and you can't bring a server that's end of life i i once had a request from a customer to try and virtualize windows nt in azure now the folks that are listening and nick's looking at me like what's windows nt right i'm a bit yeah. older than nick <laughs> yeah right yeah i wasn't born uh, that time no, no, sorry. So Windows NT is the the birth of most Windows operating systems we have today, right? It came out in 1996, the version I saw, right? When I was first in my career. Um, it was before Windows 2000. And they asked me if I could virtualize that in Azure for them. I mean, it's never going to work, right? And I had another customer the same with Windows 2003 server, 2008, and and now 2012, right? Some ver I think most versions of that are end of life as well, right? So it's you 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 know a lot of I see a lot of customers go, oh no, what do we do? We've left it, we've left it, we've left it, right? Uh, we'll put it in Azure, and it's Microsoft's problem. <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. And it's like yeah. and it's like no shared responsibility model, right? So you need to again educating people on the shared responsibility model. And that's a great matrix because it shows you what you need to do as a customer and what Microsoft brings to the table as well, right? So Microsoft runs its data centers very well, right? There's obviously security on that, but then there's stuff that is you as the customer that need to take responsibility for as well, right? And I have to educate 
a lot on that. Um, so some modernization work might need to take place. Some remediation work might need to take place. But when you're talking about migrations, coming up with um, so some low-hanging fruit, I'm going to do some IT uh, buzzwords here. <laughs> you get to you get to understand the process, right, of how to move something from on-premise to the cloud, and then have it working, right, for your customers or your users, right, which the workload serves. I it's also a great way of understanding your inventory, right. So what I mean by that is a lot of customers go, oh, I didn't know we had that. What's that doing there? Well, it's just been running for years. We don't know what it does and no one uses it. Okay. Well, we can get rid of that then, right? It's a great way of cleaning house as well. Okay, brilliant. Just before we close up, wrap up for the episode, I would like to find out more about yourself. So are you going to any events? Are you planning on going to any in the future? Like community events? I might go to KubeCon this year, my first one. I'm going to go to Cube Huddle, um, run by my good friend Mourinho in Toronto. Um, but I'm also trying to, I, I've come up with a crazy idea to launch my own event out here in uh, Western Canada, right? For folks, a tech conference. You know, um, I want people to come out here, see the mountains, view the lakes take in the atmosphere, wear a cowboy hat. And um, yeah, it's it, it's kind of crazy. I, I travel a lot for work, right? So it's difficult for me to go to some events. So I have to pick yeah. which ones I am, right? But um, I, I, I miss the European ones, right? I always see you, Nick. You've got like the most stamped passport, yeah. right? Ever. You're everywhere, <laughs> right? So uh, no, I really enjoy seeing that online as well when other folks have gone to an event. But um that's yeah, I, uh, yeah. But okay. Yeah. So speaking of speaking of events and stuff, are you doing any community events? Because I saw lately that you've been involved with quite a few community activity. Can you talk about so, more of that? So yeah, um, I've got you know I have a YouTube channel, Code to Cloud, and I am also part of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and I run. I lead, sorry, the um, local chapters here in Calgary and Edmonton for the Cloud Native Computer Foundation meetups, right? So I do that, like I think I do three every quarter. They're, they're really great. The people I get through the door, especially people starting out in tech, it's some of the, the, the people from all different walks of life. And that's where I got the idea, right, for this... Uh, uh, skybound summit, right? That I'm I'm putting together at the moment in the background is how do I do that but make it bigger? Because I just want to teach as many teach as many folks as possible and get the and get as many folks together that are very like minded as well, right? So they can all have fun yeah. and learn some new tech. So yeah, it's really big for me. It's um, it's something that wasn't available to me when I started my tech career. So you know, just giving back, right? Yeah, brilliant. It's all about giving back to the community. So yeah. before we wrap up on the episode, how can the audience get in touch with yourself and any last few words you'd like to tell others? So you can find me on X, LinkedIn, YouTube. Um, LinkedIn is becoming the prominent platform <laughs> for yeah, everyone, I but agree. you can find me on there. But my, my words of advice are stay curious and do what you love, right? And I know it's difficult because we've got bills to pay, but try and work that into your daily routine, right? Do what you love. That's brilliant. Uh, yeah, so it's good to have you on, you coming on this episode, Kevin Evans. Uh, I know you were being busy with trying to get you on. So um, in a few days, we will have it on Spotify and Apple Music. So stay tuned. Bye. Bye for now.